As promised in last week's video, here is the tour of my studio. Here's the camera I use for these Sunday Distinctions videos with its teleprompter. This is the camera I use to shoot my live streams, except when it cuts out. This is my go-to microphone for recording anything. There you go. What? You want more than just a list of gear? Well, stick around. Distinctions for life. Helping you get what you really want in life with small changes that make a big difference. I'm Ron Davis and I'm all about helping ambitious people get what they really want in life through small changes that make a big difference. I am currently taking applications for the Distinctions for Life How to Get What You Really Want online course and mastermind. It starts at the beginning of June 2020. You can apply by going to the link in the description. I went on a very calm rant last week about how producing good content and art in general is not about the gear. You might want to check that out in my video, Why You Need a Home Office Studio. I also realized that I might have sounded a little privileged in last week's episode. I understand that I am very lucky to have my setup. My office is about 300 square feet, with a quarter of that as a closet bigger than many people's whole home. I've had a long, successful career as a computer programmer, and in that time, my family and I have worked our way up from a tiny little apartment to this house. I know how I would have felt if I was in a one-bedroom apartment and some guy was talking about having a dedicated office. I understand that this is a goal and not what I expect that everyone has. I promised a home office studio tour, so here goes. My home office studio is about 24 feet long by 12 feet wide. A quarter of that is the big closet. A quarter of it is what you see here, my shooting space. I have what I think of as my office in one quarter. This consists of a large heavy desk that I bought in 2001. It is a beast to move, but a joy to use has lots of desk space. It can be broken into three parts and the side table has often ended up in a completely different part of the office. I spent two decades programming the Macintosh, so all my computer gear is Mac based. My primary work computer is a late 2014 iMac with a 27 inch retina display. I've got a second monitor attached to it and to one side. I'm pretty tall and I like to have my main monitor where the center of the screen is at eye level. I built this shelf that sits on my desk and holds the monitor at the right level. I added some Ikea strip lights to the inside for a little lighting. And this also gives me more storage on the desk as well. A good chair is essential in any office. And I've been using this chair from Human Engineering for as long as I've had my desk. And it's pretty beat up and all the foamy parts are breaking down. It's time for a new chair, but it's hard to pick one when you can't sit in them. As I mentioned, I have a huge room that stores all my gear. Here it is in all of its messy glory. I should point out that I have a lot of gear because I have accumulated it over time. I spent two decades in computers, so I literally have them laying around. I spent 10 years doing pretty serious studio photography, so I have a lot of camera and lighting gear. And I've had multiple podcasts, so I have lots of sound gear. All of it, along with hobby and making supplies, live in the closet. Now to the part you've probably been waiting for, the YouTube studio. For all of my Sunday videos, I shoot them in 4K on a Nikon Z6 with a 2870 2.8 Tamron portrait lens. This lens has been my go-to portrait lens for over a decade and I love it. I shoot in 4K not because I upload in that, but because it gives my editor leeway to zoom and pan digitally. My camera is mounted on a Manfrotto photography tripod from a past life. I use a teleprompter. At first, I created this one in a cardboard box with a piece of glass from a picture frame and two pieces of EV foam that hold it at 45 degrees. I made it in an hour at home from stuff on hand. A while back, I decided to just buy a professional teleprompter. It simplified the mounting of my camera and the teleprompter, and it was also better at blocking light behind the camera, which is key to a good teleprompter. It has a place to lay the iPad that I use for my teleprompter software. This was an old iPad I had laying around and actually has a bit of a broken screen. On that iPad, I run an app called Smart Prompter Pro. I used the free version for a long time, but did eventually upgrade to the paid version. The big feature that I wanted was the ability to remotely control the iPad from my iPhone. 
This lets me scroll backward and forward from my desk without having to get up. While many of my bloopers are me cursing the teleprompter, Smart Prompter's ability to follow my voice is pretty amazing. I write my scripts in an application called Ulysses on Mac. Then I export them with markup as PDFs for my editor and without markup as text for the teleprompter. I also use this same text file for closed captioning text on YouTube. You can create full-on fancy special closed captioning formatted text, or you can do what I do and tell them, here's the text, but without timing. And it, and it does a pretty good job of matching things, and you get the CC tag. For the live streams and video conferences, I use a completely different camera. For a long time, I just used a Logitech webcam mounted on this articulated arm and clamped to my desk. It does pretty well, and the arm lets me put it where I want it, but it is still my plan B camera. Of course, I've had to use it a couple of times during live streams. Recently, I got a new piece of gear, and I coupled it with an old piece of gear for a great webcam. I own two Canon HVX cameras. I bought these a decade ago when I did DFL 1.0. They are 8mm tape based, but they output clean 720p HDMI. I bought this little box off of Amazon that converts HDMI to USB and makes any camera show up just like a webcam. So I connected it to one of the HVs and now use it as my webcam. Which means I get a non-digital zoom and a remote control, and I can flip the screen around on the camera and monitor myself. It is great. That's the video part. Let's talk about audio. I have a Rode shotgun mic mounted to the camera's hot shoe. It runs directly into the camera's mic jack. This is decent source audio, and I've actually used it before when I screwed up the other audio. My main source for audio is my H4n. I've used this microphone for podcasting for over a decade. I record onto its SD card in stereo and then download the audio to be synced with the camera audio. With a mic like the H4n, the closer you are to the mic, the better you sound but it is surprisingly good from three or four feet away. I've put this mic all over the place, including setting it on the actual desk while shooting. And that works, but every time I hit the desk, which apparently is often, there is a bump sound recorded. Just recently, I started mounting the H4N on a boom pole instead of the shotgun mic. This keeps it pretty close to me, but not on the desk. For my live streams, I don't worry about the mic being in the frame and just use my desktop stand. Since it is live, I use the H4n as a USB mic. Wow, this tour is getting long, but no studio tour is complete without talking about lighting. I use these two LED lights to light the desk. I got them cheap off of Amazon, and they are very bright, brighter than I need, which means that they blow out my webcam. But they are adjustable. I just have to remember to adjust their output when I'm live streaming versus when I'm using the Z6. And as a matter of fact, I'm not sure I remembered to do that this time. Now, to the negative. The shape means that they don't have any ability to take modifiers, which has been a challenge when I want to keep light off the walls or the ceiling or off the background, which is what I really want to do. I would also like to mount them on either side of me and block light completely from the background, but their shape prevents that. To keep me from fading into the background, I've also added a new light behind me to give me a hair light, or bald light in my case. It's just a little up light that I found in a closet. Well, I'm sure I've missed things. But hey, it's a tour and I hope you got some ideas that you can use for your home office studio. Question of the day. What features do you want in your home office studio? Leave your answers below. This channel is all about helping you get what you really want in life with small changes that make a big difference. Until next time, I'm Ron Davis. A quarter of that is a big closet. Man, why can't I say what numbers? This lens has been my go-to portrait lens. Wait, it's hard to say. Then I export them with markup as PDFs for my editor when I remember to do the PDFs in the folder for Tim. Sorry, Tim.